guys, it's Maureen. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, my closet is empty because I'm rearranging my handbag. So if you want to find out which handbags I'm going to put there, hit the like and subscribe button so you won't miss any of my videos. So today I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my journey on vintage and how I started while I'm showing you some really cute dresses. I hope you like this video. Um, if you like content like this about vintage handbags, designer handbags, 70s clothes primarily and how to style and integrate them with modern clothes, then this is a channel for you. So actually I started to buy vintage when I was 16 and it was with my first budget of babysitting and vacation jobs. Primarily it was because I liked the romantic folky style. I was very much into Lisa Loop and Tori Amos at the time and Kate Bush. Apart from a little period that I was really obsessed with T-Boss from TLC, I cut my hair short and I bleached it like hers and I only wore thrifted uh, baggy jeans and checkered shirts from the thrift store because you couldn't find that kind of style here in Belgium because that was really a style from the US. Um, so no. Uh, apart from that period where my style completely shifted, but I still kept listening to 90s R&B. Genuinely think it is the best. Uh, I switched back to the 70s style. And then it got worse when I went to college in Ghent. I befriended a group of squatters that basically loved, lived off the grid and they had access to free clothes, free food, by dumpster diving and getting their hands on free clothes that people basically threw away and at that period like that was like almost 25 years ago people really weren't into vintage that much so it was just getting started people really didn't appreciate their old grandma's clothes they just put them outside with the trash and so those people that I befriended they wore that kind of style because basically they didn't want to pay for anything they were living off the grid and that's what they wore so I built and built my collection by buying myself. Then when I studied in Ghent, I got access to a lot of free clothes. There were also a, a little bit of like maybe two, like thrift shops weren't really a thing yet that much. Not like it's like how it's hyped today, but there were like two inny mini tiny stores that really sold vintage at a higher prices like 35 to 40 euros for a dress also that was a period when the euro came to europe the prices went up um so i built and built my collection i also altered clothes although i do not enjoy sewing that much but there was a period that i did sew and i went to sewing class and all the, those things but then later i realized it really wasn't for me um, so I built and built my collection and when I was 30 I had a really really big collection and I decided to go back to school. I rolled into film school to be a playwright and I started to sell my collection every weekend. I went to Rotterdam, Amsterdam, uh, the vintage market in Brussels, Antwerp, Bordeaux, Paris to sell vintage on specified markets for that so it was a very busy period because i was in school full-time and then i was working part-time as a social worker and then every weekend i was doing a market and then it even got worse when i bought this house with my then boyfriend i stopped my film school i got my degree then i went back to work full-time as a social worker there really wasn't any room to really go into the film writing things i just needed to work and to make money and then we both went to the markets every weekend to collect money to pay for this house um so that's actually how i started as a reseller because i'm very very lazy I never try clothes on in the shop. I just like to buy things in my size and then hopefully when I come home it fits. I know it's a terrible, terrible habit, a very money wasting, but not when it comes to vintage and when you're a reseller, then it really doesn't matter that much. So that's also why I like it. I just buy everything for me. Then when I come home, I 
pick the pieces that I really, really like uh, and that are obviously my size. What is too big, too small, I will resell and what is of course in good condition. And then also, yeah, it's tricky also with uh, Europe. I source vintage everywhere and every country has different sizing. Uh, also what is made in the 70s and is a 42 might not be a 42, might be a 44 or even 46 because people were a lot tinier then. So it is kind of difficult to really know the exact measurements. If you're selling online, definitely that's a tip. Put the measurements there for your customer. Um, so yeah, that's a bit my story and that's also still how I operate. If I go thrifting, it's really a treat for myself. I really love, love clothes that much that I just go into a uh, vintage store or thrift store and I have a certain budget and it's really nice to me that everything what I buy in this store is in my budget. That's a little bit of my background story when it comes to vintage. If you like content like this and how to identify clothes that are from cer certain eras, how to do that, which kind of styles to look for, where to source vintage, how to thrift, how to resell, uh, a lot of content on vintage handbags, which I love because the authentication process is a lot less complicated, but also authentication on designer bags and a lot of designer bag content, which I, which I also really love. And I also have a background on sourcing designer bags or vintage designer bags, also having it authenticated. Um, yeah, all that jazz. Then hit the subscribe button and in the meantime, I hope you like the dresses that I have shown you. I will link all of my reselling sites down below on this video and I hope we see each other next week for another video and yeah, leave a comment in the comment section below on which dress you like the most and why. I'm very curious and we'll see each other next week for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Stay safe and yeah, see you next week.